staff in the chat, or um, or you can raise your hand, and I believe that you can also unmute yourself. Uh, but let us know if you have any questions, and we can go ahead and start with that. And we have uh, Ben Song Du with us. Are you uh, on, Ben? Did you start your video? What? <laughs> <laughs> No question, guys. So before we start, are there any questions? Anything that you would like to be to discuss or to go into more detail from the last week? Uh, I believe I want to have you see your um, uh, so if you have any questions, please take this approach, otherwise then we'll continue with the Okay, yeah, no problem. Oh, wow. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So we continue to reach with a um, carry on with the. Um, What's the page? It's no page number. Okay, is one. Is one, I think. <clears throat> so we will reach, and then those, uh, when it comes to the um, important points, then I will elaborate. Uh, so here, among those present in 1921 was God, right? Everybody got. This, yeah, the view means, I mean, yeah, I will continue to read. Yeah, this is page, I don't know, page number. I don't have to find page number. Page number, no, I don't see any page number. Among those present in 1921 was Chang, one of uh, one of Pabunga's, uh, Pabunga's Rinpoche's closest disciples and later junior uh, tutor to 14 Dalai Lama and root a guru of many of the Geluk, uh, Geluk Lamas who fled Tibet in 1959. Teja Rinpoches took notes at the teachings um, and over the next 37 years edited them painstakingly until they, uh, they were ready to be published in Tibetan as liberation in the palm of your hand. So here, uh, um, so many of, uh, many of you may either know or may not know, uh, Pabunga Rinpoche, and also the Trejan Rinpoche, and also the uh, uh, Ling Rinpoche. So Pabunga Rinpoche, uh, who, you know, uh, in the 19th century, 
uh, the master of the 19th century who has uh, who uh, who's uh, who received many of the uh, transmissions the teachings and um uh so Prabhupada Rinpoche, especially uh, of the master of the numerous teachings, he was also the one of the you know the master of the mind training practice, and also the uh, the master of the uh, Lamrim teaching. And then in the uh, Vajrayana tradition, uh, he of the you know although he has uh, he received uh, did receive many of the empowerment, many of the transmissions, the teachings of the Guru Samaja. Uh, Yamandaga, and especially he is uh, believed to be the emanation of uh, Heruka Jagrasambara <clears throat> and Heruka Jagrasambara. So there are many, you know, uh, the texts that he wrote, uh, the, a wonderful text uh, that he wrote on Heruka Jagrasambara, and he also wrote many wonderful texts on mind training practice. And also, the you know, in the uh, Lamrim, he wrote the liberation in the palm of your, palm of your hand. And then he's one of the main students. Uh, he has uh, many, many, you know, uh, um, uh, students, and especially those well known. For example, you know, uh, like Ling uh, Rinpoche, and then Tijan Rinpoche. So these uh, two uh, spiritual beings are one of his closest uh, disciples, closest students, and uh, with regards to Ling Rinpoche, Ling Rinpoche. Uh, he was believed to be the emanation of uh, Yamandaga. Uh, so, Little Buche received so many teachings from uh, Pamanga Rinpoche. And when it comes to the you know spiritual you know uh, uh, guru devotion, so Little Buche uh, held uh, Pamanga Rinpoche in supreme. And similarly, uh, Tijan Rinpoche, uh, he Tijan Rinpoche, uh, Tijan Rinpoche was you know uh, Pamanga Rinpoche's one of the closest. Uh, uh, student, uh, Tijan uh, he was in, he was the emanation of the uh, Master Adisha's uh, body, speech, and mind, and especially he was also the emanation of the uh, Jagasambara, Hiruka Jagasambara, and so His Holiness uh, did receive so many, many teachings, you know, Lingabuji, Tijan these uh, two spiritual uh, great spiritual beings are his, you know, the two uh, root guru. And then, yeah, from these two uh, spiritual beings, all receive their translation, their teachings in the ocean of the Buddha's teaching, all from uh, uh, Pumagaramiche, right? So this is briefly of the Ling Rinpoche, you know, Pumagaramiche, uh, Ling Rinpoche, and Tijang Rinpoche, right? Tijan uh, was the junior to do to his holiness, the Dalai Lama, and the Ling Rinpoche was the senior to do to his holiness, the Dalai Lama. <clears throat> so, yeah, not only they, uh, these, uh, uh, these great beings, not only, you know, good, not only the master of the, the teachings, but they are, you know, really, you know, uh, gain mastery and command over the many of the knowledge, you know, since so like medicine, like astrology and like divination, like linguistic, and also the Tibetan grammar and all these things, the poetry, you know. <clears throat> so they have excel in this knowledge. Prabhupada Rinpoche was probably the most influential Geluk Lamas of this uh, of this century, holding all the important lineages of the Sutra and Tantra, and uh, passing them on to the more, more, uh, most of the important Geluk Lamas of the next two, next two generations, the list of his oral discourses is vast in depth and breadth. He was also the root guru of Kevjilin Rinpoche, uh, senior tutor of uh, the Dalai Lama, Kishan Rinpoche, and many other highly respected uh, teachers. His collected works uh, occupy 15 vo large volumes and comes uh, cover all the aspects of Buddhism. If you have ever received the teachings from a Geluk uh, Lama, you have been influenced by Pabanga Rinpoche. So uh, now, uh, you know, 
his holiness a majority of the you know the the, the mind training uh, practice teaching mind training teachings and the practice and also you know um, and also many of the teachings on buddha's discourses many of the buddha's uh, teachings and also uh, in the vajrayana uh, and there are so many, many teachings, you know, so many, many transmissions, you know, so many, many empowerments, you know. All this received, Ling uh, and Tijan Rinpoche received from Pamunga Rinpoche, right. Pamunga Rinpoche received from whom? Who was the main teacher of the Pamunga Rinpoche? The main teacher of the Pamunga Rinpoche was by, by the name, uh, the master Jambil Hindu. Right, Jambil Hindu. He also was a great, you know, uh, the masters. Who also, you know, really gained command and you know, learned, uh, learned uh, scholar in Lamrim and also the great practitioner of Lamrim, right? Jambil Hindu, Master Jambil Hindu. Who was the teacher of the Master Jambil Hindu? The teacher of the Master Jambil Hindu was Tapu Gyasan Kedub. Now, who was the Tapu Gyasan Kedub also wrote many wonderful and amazing teachings on, you know, Chakra Sambara, Keruka Chakra Sambara. And then, you know, who was the teacher of the Thakpo Gyasan Kedu? The teacher of the Thakpo Gyasan Kedu was uh, Thakpo Gyasan Denzi, right? Another great master who also wrote many wonderful teachings on the Chakra Sambara practice, right? So if you try to go, try to find the source, you know, there's a, you know, uh, the, there's a reliable source, you know, there's a reliable source. One of the, one of the uniqueness in the, uh, you know, the Gilip tradition is that, you know, I mean, uh, in Buddhism and especially Indian Buddhism is that they, you know, try to find the source, you know, where the source comes from, right? <clears throat> so this shows the authenticity and the reliability of the teachings, right? So if we read the source, if we try to listen to the teachings, if we try to put into practice, we gain a spiritual experience and realization because it has a real source, something which has no source, you know, just uh, try to, you know, uh, with your base on your intellectual understanding, if you try to, you know, teach other and other try to practice, no, not much realization, not much experience will be born, in blossom in one's mental continent. <clears throat> so this is important to uh, yeah, understand <clears throat> because uh, Buddha spoken, Buddha, Buddha should have spoken this and that teaching, and the and the great panditas and the great learned scholars uh, studied it, listened to it, and the the great you know translators translated from the Sanskrit into the uh, Tibetan, and the great yogis of you know Indian uh, Indian uh, you know uh, Indian Buddhist. They should have practiced and they should have, you know, cultivated and developed the spiritual experience. Based on such a text, we study this. There is no doubt, there is no question that if we put into practice, we also develop the same spiritual experience. So this is another important thing that we should know. <clears throat> ah. So, Pamunga uh, Rinpoche, you know, doing all the uh, around came in around you know 19th century, but his teaching has you know, uh, you know, especially the liberation the palm of your hand. He gave so many many teachings, you know, so many great you know masters also you know studied under his feet, you know. <clears throat> then there are four main schools of Tibetan Buddhism, and all have Lamrim, Lamrim. All have Lamrim style teaching, but the Nyingma, Sakya, and Kagyu schools do not contemplate, do not, do not emphasize, you know, okay, do not emphasize the Lamrim as does the Geluk. Although generally in the Geluk uh, monastic curriculum, the Lamrim is, uh, Lamrim is not taught to the monks and quite late, late in their careers. It is often the first teaching given to the Westerners. And liberation has been the lumbering that Giluk masters, Giluk, uh, masters teach most. Right. So here, what it says is, you know, I mean, the, the translator, you know, sharing his own view. He says, Nyingma, Sajya, Kagyu, they don't emphasize, you know, on the lumbering. 
So this is pretty uh, uh, not accurate. For example, in the Nyingma tradition, in the Nyingma tradition, we call the old tradition, you know, old school of Tibetan Buddhism. In the Nyingma tradition, they do have the Lamrim. They do have the Lamrim. They also emphasize you know, too much on Lamrim. For example, what is the Lamrim teaching? What is the Lamrim text? Resting the mind at comfort. So this is text, you know. This text, resting the mind at comfort and resting the mind at ease. So this is the, the text. That Nyingma, you know, the, the practitioner, you know, use this text. So uh, the composer, the, the, the great master Longchenba, Longchenba wrote this text, you know, and then there are three commentaries to it, three commentaries to the three commentaries to it. The Longchenba himself wrote the commentary, these three commentary, right? Uh, the garland of the white lotus, uh, the great chariot, and then the instructions to the label enlightenment. So this is composed by only one, you know, uh, the other, right, right, other. So later on, uh, around in 19th century, again, the great master, Patu Rinpoche, Dzogchen Patu Rinpoche, he also composed the one very beautiful text, you know, which is also very easy to understand, you know, very simple, uh, easy to understand, also very, you know, the moving uh, text, uh, Lamnim text, uh, by the name of uh, the words, the words of my perfect teacher. So this was composed by Padre Rinpoche. Uh, so these are the Numa texts, you know. So Numa, they do study, emphasis study. For example, uh, uh, you know, resting the mind at ease, you know. So this is also a wonderful text, you know. Many Numa, they do study this text. And then in the case of the, you know, Kagyu, Kagyu right? When it comes to the Kagyu, Kagyu, they do have the wonderful text, you know, what is called as you know, the ornament of liberation by Master Gambuba. Gambhava wrote this text. Gambhava was the uh, the disciple of the uh, Gambhava was the disciple of the uh, the Milarepa, Lord Milarepa. So Gambhava has also produced so many wonderful, you know, students, you know, wonderful uh, disciples, you know, so many wonderful disciples. So Gambhava, although he was a kaju, who although he was a kaju, right, but uh, but he did receive many teachings from the Kadamba masters. He did receive many teachings from the Kadamba masters, for example, like Chayuwa, the Kadamba master called Chayuwa. He uh, did receive the teachings from the Kadamba master Chayulwa, right? So based on this, he you know, composed this wonderful text, you know, the ornament of liberation. <clears throat> so Yingma also do emphasis, so Kaju also do emphasis on the Lamrim, the ornament of the ornament of uh, uh, the ornament of you know liberation. Then when we come to the you know Sakya, you know uh, we may wonder Sakya they don't have you know teaching because we don't have uh, Lamrim teaching we may have not have not have heard Sakya do have Lamrim you know uh, to essen essential Lamrim. But if you go into the Sakya's you know, real teaching, the path and fruit in the Sakya's teaching, what is called as path and fruit. In this path and fruit teaching, the one of the main teaching of the Sakya tradition, right? Path and fruit, we will find the uh, the concepts like three visions and the three continuum. In the three visions, in the three visions, the first vision is impure, impure vision. So in which now all the Lamrim practices are explained in the three visions. You know, all the Lamrim teachings are explained in the three visions, right? And then uh, the, the concise, you know, Lamrim teaching of the Sakya teaching is parting from the four clingings. Parting from the four clingings. So Sakya, they do have the teaching parting from the four clingings, right? So the composed by the great master uh, Kunga Jinze, <clears throat> like this. <clears throat> So, you know, similar like, you know, Gelug tradition, Nyingma, Nyingma, Kagyu, Sakya, they do have the, you know, this uh, Lamrim teaching, right? Uh, except the, the term is different, you know, the term is different. Maybe, you know, the, uh, the term may be different. Otherwise, the, the subject matter, you know, is almost same, right? <clears throat> uh, they, uh, yeah, like this. In, in his brief introduction, Chapter Treasure Rinpoche conveys a strong 
a sense of what it was like to be there. Indeed, this text is unusual among the Tibetan works in that it is the edited manuscript, an edited manuscript and an oral discourse. Oral discourse, uh, not literacy composition. Hence, not only do we receive some very precious uh, readings, the essence of the high, the essence of the eight key lumberings. <clears throat> right. So let me read, then I will explain. But we also gain the insight into how much discourses were given in Tibet. The points that deny the points that deny the special feature of this teaching may be found in Trijanabuche's introduction and at the end of the day one. Right. So so we may wonder, you know, if we were to study, you know, uh, the liber uh, palm of liberation, right? If we were to practice the, you know, the Lamrim text, you know, the path of, you know, uh, liberation in the palm of your hand. What really is this text, you know? What is the subject matter of this, you know, wonderful text, you know? So how this teaching is taught, you know, by Prabhupada Rinpoche? So, so yeah, many uh, the masters uh, requested, you know, to give Pabangaram Bache to give this teaching, you know, the Lamrim teaching. But what kind of Lamrim teaching, right? So Pabangaram Bache already composed the Lamrim teaching, you know, established in the palm of your hand, and this teaching he was he was giving, not not in that way. Pabangar, how did this book come into being? The liberation in the palm of your hand. Pabangaram Bache uh, practiced, you know, uh, two men Lamrim. There are eight men Lamrim. But of these eight, of course, he you know practiced all these eight lamrims. But mainly, uh, he practiced, for example, like uh, Manjushri's words. There's one text called Manjushri's words, which was composed by the fifth Dalai Lama. And then there is another, you know, wonderful in text, you know, wonderful text called Easy, uh, not Easy Path, a Blissful Path, Blissful Path, you know. Uh, uh, better say, you know, um, joyful path. So he used these two texts, you know, these two texts. In these two texts, you know, what what it talks about. So it talks about, you know, uh, these two texts are what sometimes, you know, we called, uh, you know, naked, the naked discourses, the naked discourses. The naked discourses means all the Buddha's teachings are essential highs. All the Buddha's teachings are condenses, you know. Very important, you know, Buddha's teachings, you know, the we call the pit instructions are essentialized into these two wonderful texts, you know. So, Pongo Rambache practiced these two Lamrim and based on his own experience, what kind of uh, Lamrim experience he developed, based on his own experience, then he taught the Lamrim. That Lamrim, somebody, uh, somebody, somebody took the notes. Who was the person who took the notes? It was the, his closest disciple, Tejan Rinpoche. Tejan Rinpoche took the notes of this, uh, uh, note of the teaching that Papanga Rinpoche gave, right? So therefore, uh, this uh, particular Lamrim letter came to be known as liberation in the palm of your hand, right? <clears throat> now, uh, we may wonder, what are the eight Lamrims, right? The eight Lamrims. So I don't go into uh, each of the, I don't go much detail into each of these eight lumbrings. I just, you know, uh, uh, you know, say the name. Uh, Master Tsongkhapa was, you know, the great stages of the path to enlightenment. One, middling stages of the path to enlightenment. Two, Master Tsongkhapa was uh, short lumbring text, which is sometimes called as experiential, experiential instruction, experiential song, because Master Tsongkhapa based on what he practiced, the Lamrim. So based on his own experience, so he wrote this beautiful text, experiential song, right? Three. Then the fifth, the fourth Lamrim is uh, fifth Dalai Lamas, as I, uh, as I you know, mentioned you know, earlier, fifth Dalai Lamas, Manjushri words, you know. So this is also a wonderful text, you know, really wonderful text. Uh, Fifth Dalai Lama, all the Dalai Lamas are uh, believed to be emanation of the Avalokiteshvara, right? But they have compassion, right? Compassion. So, 
uh, fifth Dalai Lama, uh, you know, unlike you know other masters, you know, uh, he mainly he studies Sakya, he practiced Sakya, he practiced Kaju, he practiced Nyingma, he practiced Geluk. Oh, you know, I mean, non-sectarian, you know, like fifth Dalai Lama. <clears throat> so he wonderful text. This text is a wonderful, wonderful text. Right, fifth Dalai Lama, and then we have, uh, oh yeah. Third Dalai Lama, sorry, Third Dalai Lama, first is Third Dalai Lama. Third Dalai Lama uh, composed a one beautiful Lamrim, which is very short, you know, maybe maybe 100 pages. So he, Lamrim, by the name of the essence of the refined gold, the essence of the refined gold was the beautiful text, you know. So he, this text, you know, uh, he taught in the Mongol because the Mongol were around his, around those times, you know. Mongol people, you know, a little bit, you know, they, they, you know, they, they wage the war, you know, so they also <laughs> looks like sacrifices of the animals, you know, <clears throat> this. So then he gave this teaching to the Mongolian people, right? So then later on, Mongolian people, you know, really, really become a good practitioner, right? Become a very good practitioner. So then we call Dalai Lama, right? Dalai Lama. Actually, it's called Talai Lama. Talai Lama in Mongol language is, is called Talai Lama. So because of this, the name title Talai Lama was given to the third Talai Lama by the Mongol Emperor Aldan Khan, right? <clears throat> so then in the Mongol, uh, the third Dalai Lama really flourished, uh, you know, uh, the Buddha's teaching and especially, especially the Gelug tradition in the Mongol, you know, in the Mongol region. So it's the third Dalai Lama. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Sonam Gyazo, right? Talit Dalai Lama, Sonam Gyazo, right? So the essence of the refined gold, right? Fifth Dalai Lama's text, uh, uh, Manjushri's words. So we have five, right? Five. Now, six, which was the uh, sixth Lamrim. The sixth Lamrim was one of the very wonderful in the text by the first pension Lama, the easy path, the easy path, right? So the easy part, you know, uh, people, uh, no, people, you know, around those time, you know, oh, Lamrim, the great Lamrim, oh, this is, uh, you know, oh, too, too, you know, too elaborate, you know, uh, people think we don't have much time, you know, uh, they, these day, people, you know, really want you know, easy, you know, easy and powerful, you know, effective, you know, of course, the chief best way of achieving the spiritual qualities like this. So then, you know, now you see how the the just you know, first Lamri uh, great, then yeah middle, then very short. <laughs> Dalai Lama's Sonam Gyazo's Lamri, you know essence of the you know refined gold, and then the you know uh, fifth Dalai Lama's Majeshiro was, then Pension Lama's you know the Lamri, which is yeah uh, easy path. So he you know essentialized all the Buddha's teaching into this you know. If you look into this Lamri, if you look into the Lam this Lamri. Uh, this lamrim is slightly, you know, mixed with tantra, tantra practice, because why it is mixed with tantra practice in this lamrim, uh, there is a visualization of the nectar, nectar flowing down through your body and purifying all, you know, purifying all your negativities and so many things, right? So there is a special instruction which uh, comes from the, you know, uh, vajrayana practice, right? So this, uh, uh, this. Uh, so this uh, Lamrim teaching is something very unique, you know, unique, uh, unique, and uh, easy for many people, many people. That's why it's called easy path, right? Easy path. <clears throat> and uh, and then uh, the the next pension lama, Lo Sang Ishi, pension Lo Sang Ishi is composed wonderful text. Another text that is called a blissful path, joyful path. Why the name is given this? Why this name is given is now you know. Uh, now uh, in the bliss, in the you know easy path, although many you know rare instructions, many big instructions, many of the you know essential instructions is there, but it is little not clear, not that clear you know, not that clear. So the students ask him when Chen Dosan is here to elaborate it. To compose a text which would further elaborate, 
right? What is presented in the uh, easy path. So Professor Dosan is taught So in, in the blissful part, you know, if I elaborate, you know, uh, no, this uh, easy part, if I elaborate, the student, you know, the student asked him, you know, the after pension loss, he pension, you know, loss and chicken, taught this lamrim, taught this lamrim. Again, somebody took the note, somebody took the note, and then somebody took the note. And then this note, the student offered to pension lama for review. So pension lama look at this into his lamrim. Oh, this is wonderful, you know. It's very good, you know. So uh, the student asked if it is okay to include in his volume, you know, writings. My pension officer said, okay, oh, very good, you know, you can include in my writing. So this is how the, you know, the easy path came into being. And then the, the next uh, blissful path or you know, joyful path. So this, upon the request of the student, so pension Lama taught this Lamrim, right? So, this is again, you know, the joyful and uh, uh, joyful and blissful path is again a beautiful lamrim, right? In which you know uh, many essential, uh, many of the you know the lamrim teachings are so essentialized, you know, condenses into it. So if you try to search the you know, if you try to search the you know source, you know, it all go, it all you know went back to Master Zongaba. Master Zongaba gave to his uh, student, you know, uh, mm, <laughs> the name. <laughs> mm. Oh yeah, Master Zongaba gave this uh, te teaching into the, uh, you know, mm, now I forgot <laughs> <coughs> mm, the name. Uh, Jambi yeah. Gyazo, yeah, Jambi Gyazo. Master Zongaba gave this teaching into the Jambi Gyazo. Jambi Gyazo gave this teaching to the, uh, uh, you know, Pasu Chukyenze, Pasu Chukyenze gave this to the Chukyu Doji, Chukyu Doji gave this to the uh, Lausan Tundu, Master Lausan Tundu, Master Lausan Tundu gave this to the, uh, this, um, the uh, one Tungwa Gyesap, Tungwa Gyesap to Penjil Lausan Chukye. Right, so it looked like, you know, this teaching Lamrim, you know, uh, the blissful path and easy path. Don't think that Pedro Lawson Shuge wrote this, you know, text, uh, wrote this text, you know. But what is the source, you know? Pedro Lawson Shuge, up to Pedro Lawson Shuge, you know, up to his teacher, all this teaching not put into practice, not put into the writing. One must uh, give mouth to mouth, from mouth to mouth, you know. They are not put into, you know, writing. Then Pedro Dama, Pedro Dama thought that this teaching would extinguish on the verge of getting extinguished. So he really, you know, uh, thought, oh, it would be a great loss if such a wonderful teaching are to be, you know, extinguished. So he, you know, put into writing. Pension Lama put this into the writing, right? So that is what Leto call as uh, the easy path and the blissful path, right? So this is how the blissful path came into being, right? And then uh, we have the, you know, so uh, if you look into this, you know, the Lamrim, you know, uh, Lamrim, Jambel uh, Shalom, right? Uh, the Majushri's words, this is especially highly flourished, well flourished in the uh, cent uh, uh, central uh, Tibet. And then there's another Lamrim, which is the easy path, which is then later flourish into the, you know, uh, Yes, sang, sang, sang regime, right? So this is how it is flourished. And then we have the last lambing, which is what is called as the essence of the eloquent speech. The essence of the eloquent speech. So the essence of the eloquent speech was, you know, also it is very beautiful in the text. It had contains many, many wonderful, you know, uh, how to do the practice and how to, you know, really um, many of the, you know, rare instructions. You will find in that lamrim, right? Then, uh, yeah. But about the biography, you know, um, uh, the the detailed biography is not, you know, available, right? This the the you know the writer of this you know wonderful text, you know, the essence of the eloquent speech, right? So these are all about the eight 
tribes of Lamrim. So I touched briefly, briefly, you know, I don't go much into detail, you know, <clears throat> we don't have much time. So then, um, just to uh, recap, from what you're saying, it seems very, um, Lamrim is a very important text. That's why there's so many teachers, high, high level lamas have um, in their ways, in their own ways, have created their own teaching. So that's one point. And I think the other point is that um, it's so profound and a little bit high level. So each of the lamas, when it gets to the eighth teaching, the eighth um, lambrim, it's a little bit easier and easier to understand, easier to practice. Is that is that the correct statement? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the, yeah. 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 And it, it looked like, you know, that I look like you know that you know as as time you know <laughs> degenerate you know people, people have no you know time <laughs> people are busy you know so these great masters you know first sighted so they you know depending on the you know availability of the you know the practitioner's timing so they make you know book must become thinner and thinner. <laughs> I, I also have a uh, question then. You mentioned that uh, this Lambrim, the version that we're studying, is um, usually the first thing that's taught to the Westerner, but mm -hmm. in the Galut tradition, it's mm -hmm. being taught um, like 10 years after you start your uh, studies. Why is that so? <clears throat> So, you know, this, uh, so yeah, this Lamrim, you know, uh, uh, many of the, you know, if we, if we study the Lamrim Chemo, the great treatises, you know, the great stages of the path to enlightenment, you know, so the, the subject, you know, inside the subject matter, a little bit yeah, difficult to understand, right? Whereas when we, you know, uh, come to the, the liberation in the palm of your hand, you know, the the practice are simplified you know so it's easy to practice and it also has you know many you know uh, all the you know important points of the lamrim teachings right so also the most important thing is it is you know it used many examples you know uh, beautiful examples uh, it also used you know uh, many metaphors it also you know put easy to put into practice right they don't use so many you know thick words you know so yeah, this you know, uh, for the for the larger audience, for the larger audience, you know, liberation in the palm of your hand is enough. <laughs> no, so another no, word. No, no, no. So another word for lay people like us. This is the yeah. perfect way to learn Lam Rim. But in yeah. the monastery, <laughs> you are studying the higher version of uh, Lama Song Kapa's uh, yeah. Lam Rim, correct? Yeah, that's, that's true. That's great to know. <laughs> Thank you, Van. Yeah. So um, if I can ask a question of Hannah and or Ven, um, Pemunka, he drew mainly from Blissful Path and Manjushri's own words, um, yeah. but he but he also used all eight other texts. Is that is that true? A synthesis of all, but mainly two. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he mainly used uh, you know the main reference, you know. Uh, he uh, because he practiced you know uh, uh, the subject he practices he practiced the path you know uh, the path explained in the Majusiri's um, words and also the path those you know spiritual uh, you know practices explained in the uh, blissful word he combined these two right he combined these two then you know some spiritual experience developed and based on this you know he also taught you know although he used the eight lamrim but mainly these two yeah just yeah. So in easy path, if I if I don't read easy path, I don't get to enlightenment in two hours. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I will, now, I yeah. I'll read liberation. <laughs> That's wishful thinking, right, bro? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The the the, the London is extremely very important to understand, you know, because you know. Uh, they are uh, in early times, you know. There, there comes, uh, you know, you know, uh, in very early times, you know, maybe in 11th century. 11th century, 
uh, their kind of the tradition, you know, flourish tradition, you know, flourish somehow, you know, uh, the people view uh, people wear the you know the uh, the the dress right, a uh, blue dress below, and then the uh, instructions, uh, you know, instruction appeared, which says, which says, if you meditate for one week, seven seven days, you know, in uh, you become enlightened, <laughs> right? And then what it does is, you know, you need to you need to you need to meditate underground, <laughs> underground, and then it says, you know, you get enlightened, you know. Not only this, in uh, in early times, there's a, a instruction called, uh, uh, you know, uh, the person can achieve. The individual can achieve enlightenment in a daytime if meditate on daytime. The, the individual can achieve enlightenment in the nighttime when meditate on the nighttime. Those fortunate ones, those fortunate ones, without doing any kind of meditation, just instantly achieve enlightenment. <laughs> that that you know that was later you know I don't know the instruction was kicked out. <laughs> Yeah, Melareba did the same thing, you know, the great Melareba, you know, Melareba, the, he thought, he, you know, he did some spelling, you know, black, black magic, and then he thought she was very fortunate, you know, because he got the result in seven days, in one week, so he thought he was very fortunate, you know, that he got the result in seven days, right, so, you know, one of his guru, one of his teacher give the instructions, you know, this kind of instructions, you know, and then he thought, you know, uh, without doing anything, he would achieve enlightenment. And then he was not doing, you know, he was just singing, you know, uh, lying on the bed, you know, he was just singing, you know. And then his, uh, the master came, uh, do you have some spiritual experience? And then the spiritual master saw him lying, you know, singing, you know, <laughs> like this, oh my goodness, you know. <laughs> this is not the way, you know, uh, I, can, I cannot tame you. I cannot tame you, you just go away. <laughs> <laughs> like this. So he sent Melareba to Marba, you know, you better uh, go to Marba. I have no karmic connection with you. <laughs> yeah, something like this. Yeah. Okay, then I will read. Uh, therefore, what is that why? Oh, okay. Uh, dear, okay. Each chapter corresponds to this teaching and usually begins with a uh, short, short talk to see the motivation of the listeners. In the book, the motivation uh, has been abbreviated in favor of the new material. But the remarkable, remarkable uh, first chapter, day one, is both an elaborate motivation and an excellent glance, uh, excellent glance meditation on the entire lambim. In a sense, the rest of the book is a uh, commentary on this chapter, as Pabunga Rinpoche makes clear throughout, uh, throughout, um, throughout, dedicating ourselves. To the development of the bodhicitta is the most meaningful way of directing our lives and the graded realization summarized. Summarized in day one led us to that goal. At the end of the book, uh, says, practice whatever you can so that my teaching will not have my teaching will not have been in when, <laughs> but above all, make bodhicitta your main practice. These teachings contain much that is new and unfamiliar, especially for Westerners. But as with any meaningful pursuit, study and reflection led to clarity and understanding. Right, so it talks about the motivation, you know. When you know listening, you know, uh, for example, like you know, even you know, uh, the thing is that you know, uh, even you know, uh, when we receive some kind of discussion, you know, discussion. I mean, you know, for your side is good, you know, 
even though we do, of course, you know, in the real teaching, you know, in the real teaching, uh, the motivation is setting up the correct motivation and the right motivation is very, very important. Even during the discussion, you know, it's up to the individual to cultivate a proper motivation, a right motivation like these things, right? So generally speaking, you know, uh, generally speaking, you know, not only the, you know, uh, in the teaching, uh, in every kind of, you know, lessons, you know, for example, you know, we listen, we listen to those lectures and important lectures like these things. It is very, very important to have the proper motivation, you know, proper motivation, right? For example, right now in the, uh, in the Lamrim teachings, it talks about, you know, three kinds of, you know, uh, you know, one need to listen to the teachings or, you know, not only teaching, you know, in any kind of knowledge, you know, one need to, you know, listen in such a way that is free from the three faults, you know, three faults. Three faults, what are the three faults is, you know, you have the vessel, you know, three vessel. When the vessel is turned upside down, what happens? You know, then teaching, you know, one will not hear the teaching, right? We have the vessel, vessel is leaking from the bottom, <laughs> right? Then whatever we hear, you know, if you don't, you know, think much, you know, then one after a few days can totally forget, right? And then one is the, what is called as vessel leaking, not only leaking, you have the vessel, you know, if you put the, you know, dirt, you know, dirt, something, you know, bad smell inside, and then you put the water into it, we are not going to drink, right? Why? Because it's polluted, right? Similarly, when listening to the teachings, if your you know motivation is so much polluted, you know, teaching not not that much you know effective for you, right? So therefore, it says you know when listening to teachings, one need to you know uh, you know one need to uh, have freed from the, these these three faults, you know, the vessel upside down, the vessel which has leaking. The vessel, which is a contaminated vessel, right? Dirty vessel. <laughs> With this, you know, if you listen to the teachings, then it's a really perfect, you know, whatever we hear, you know, it it absorbed, you know, in your mind very nicely, <laughs> profoundly, <clears throat> like this. And then there are, you know, six, and this kind of, uh, you know, when listening, not only to the Dharma, you know, even in the, you know, if you're studying, you know, some kind of, you know, in the school, you know, in the school or university, you know, so these things are, you know, needed, right? So these things, for example, you know, when we attend the, you know, uh, when we attend the teaching, you know, sometimes it says, you know, we are, we are not living, we are existed <laughs> in the, in the class, you know, we get distracted, you know, thinking about somewhere, you know, no matter that the, the lecturer, you know, the professor gives the teaching, you know, the mind go here, <laughs> we don't hear, you know. And then, you know, then when the professor teaches something, you know, we need to investigate, right? We need to, you know, think very well, right? For example, I, I, I have that experience, you know, when we attend the school, you know, school, what we do, what we do is, you know, when, the, when there's examination, right? When there's an annual examination, we have the three semester, right? Three semester. What we do is, uh, when we, you know, study, when the examination come, we don't think, we don't think why it is so. What we do is, what is stated in the book, what is stated in the book, each word we memorized. So this is how we pass the test. <laughs> so then when we come into the real world, then <laughs> it's a different story, <laughs> right? <clears throat> So like this. <laughs> so then, yeah, we have the yeah, motivation, right? Three motivation. And then we have the six types of motivation, right? Six kinds of proper motivation to set up, right? I will not discuss this. <laughs> and then, yeah, uh, oh, oh, we don't, yeah, read this, yeah. This is, yeah, not that, yeah. We will talk about, we go through this. A memoir by Rivera Mitchell, right? So, yeah, we talk about the, you know, um, the memoir by uh, Rivera uh, about It was about the Papunga Rinpoche, right? My guru, kind in three ways, who meet face to face with Heruga. <laughs> I already told you that, you know, 
Hungarambuje. I mean, the His Holiness uh, Dalam himself, uh, His Holiness also taught me you know, uh, emanation, right? Emanation of the Chagrasambara, Hiruga. Mm -hmm. Whose name I find difficult to utter. Right. So, kind in three ways, you know, kind in three ways. What are the, you know, kind, you know? Sometimes we say, uh, my, my teacher is kind in three ways, right? What are the kind in three ways? Kind in three ways means, for example, right? I hear, right? Uh, you know, uh, for example, uh, you receive the, you know, Buddha Sadhava vow, right? If you are a monk, you receive the monk vow. If you are a lay person, you receive the, you know, lay person vow, right? So you receive the Bodhisattva vow, uh, you receive the Tantric vow, you know. So this is the first one. Because the, the, your teacher gives you all these things, right? And then the second one, second kind, first is the first kind. Second kind is your teacher give you the, you know, teaching, right? Teaching oral transmission. Or now, for example, the Lamrim, right? Your teacher is going to teach you the Lamrim, you know. Any kind of Lamrim, not only Lamrim, any kind of teaching, you know, teaching, right? So uh, kindly give you the teaching. So this is the second kind. Third kind is now your teacher give you the, you know, the uh, instruction how to do the practice how to do the right way of doing the practice, right, you know, correct way of doing the practice, you know, right. Sometimes, you know, uh, we don't understand, you know, oh, I can read from the book, you know, I can use that, you know, book. this is not <laughs> enough, right. Now I will tell, right. Now here, uh, you know, uh, Buddha's teaching, Buddha's teaching is like an ocean. Buddha's teaching is like an ocean, right. And then, uh, we know three principal aspects of the path, right? Three principal aspects of the path. What are the three principal aspects of the path? Is the sense of renunciation, uh, bodhicitta, bodhidam, and then the wisdom, right? Wisdom. So these three are the like the jewels, you know, precious jewels, precious gem in the ocean, right? Then lamrim, you know. So uh, then the boat, you know, ship, the ship, the ship is like the lamrim. The ship is like the lamrim, right? The ship is like the lamrim, and then we have the captain. You know, the captain is like a spiritual guide, spiritual teacher. So, so, you know, if we try to get some, you know, precious jewels from the ocean, you know, if we, you know, take a walk, you know, if we just try to uh, uh, take a walk, you know, if we just try to go by yourself and try to search, you know, it will take forever. <laughs> you will not get any gold. <laughs> you will not get any precious jewels from the, you know, sheep, from the, the ocean, right? So, in order to get the, you know, jewel, precious jewels from the ocean, what you need? What you need is you need the sheep, first sheep, right, boat. You need to sail in the ocean. So you need the boat, you know. Is it enough to have just the boat? No. Have, just to have the boat is not enough. You need the, uh, uh, you know, skillful captain. Where is the boat? The, the ship, you know, the, the you know, uh, the captain, the captain sail, and where is the, you know, the goal, the location, right? Similarly, now what it says, similarly, if you try to just, you know, study the, you know, the vast teaching of Buddha, you know, this, you know, directly from the Buddha's teaching, you get lost, you know, we get lost. <laughs> yeah. What really is Buddha's teaching, you know, so many, many teachings, you know, one person saying this, one person saying this, what? <laughs> we get lost, you know. So what we need is, in order to really understand what is the Buddha's ultimate intention, Buddha's true intention, what you need is, you need Lamrim. We need Lamrim. Without doing Lamrim, you know, in the Buddha's, you know, some, some we put, you know, uh, 20 volumes, 30 volumes. <laughs> I also have so many volumes. <laughs> So that's not that, you know, we get lost. So the simple thing is, just refer to the Lamrim, right? Lamrim, again, you know, just is it enough to just study, you know, from the book, Lamrim book? No, you need the skillful teacher who really, you know, show you the right way of teaching, how to do the right practice, you know. Many of us doing the practice, you know, but we don't know how to do it in the right way. 
So sometimes, you know, the people say, oh, I spent 10 years, I don't feel anything, I don't feel connected with the practice. Why? <laughs> because something, something of the real, you know, the what we call as real and naked and uh, the living, you know, instructions is lacking. <laughs> so th that's why, you know, when we do something, you know, we do something in a very skillful way. <clears throat> so this is here, it's talking, you know, you know uh, a kind of three ways, right? Kind of three ways. In sutra, you know, in the sutra teaching, we can, we have the kind of three ways, someone, you know, and not only this, now we say here, uh, you know, uh, we say uh, the spiritual teacher, for example, we say spiritual teacher who is kind in three ways, right? And then say uh, about, you know, training in faith and these things uh, for the time being, you know, we live aside. It's pretty complicated, yeah. Just, you know, kind, you know, kind in that respect, you know, for example, we say uh, one spiritual guru is kind in, uh, one spiritual guru is very kind to you. The spiritual guru is more kinder than the Buddha of the three times, <laughs> right? <laughs> Buddha of the three times. Now, for example, so many Buddhas have appeared. So many Buddhas have limitless numbers of Buddhas have appeared, right? So somehow they are not able to, you know, guide us <laughs> because of our high intelligent. <laughs> and many Buddhas have appeared, and the great masters have appeared, right? And then the Buddha Shakyamuni have appeared. Of course, we were born in the era of Buddha Shakyamuni, but you know, uh, we are not able to see him. Right? Only uh, the only thing is that we are able to, you know, see his text. You know, see his, you know, the teachings. Right? So we say the person who who benefit here, right? Right? Or uh, day by day, you know, day to day life, who benefit is we say the you know the spiritual guru that one has you know, this really you know uh, brings benefit, right? So in that respect, you know, uh, uh, the, the one uh, spiritual guru or rule guru is uh, not only kind in three ways. Is uh, you say uh, more uh, uh, more uh, more kinder than the Buddhas of the three times, right? So this will be here in the in, it will uh, dealt you know it will deal in later. Okay. So in the also Vajrayana, now Vajrayana, someone who gives you the, you receive the empowerment, right? You receive the empowerment, you know, uh, mm, you know, uh, our local Shivara empowerment, uh, Green Thara, White Thara, you know, Amitayus, uh, you know, mm, Buddha Amitabha, you know, whatever you the empowerment, right? Uh, this one. And then uh, empowerment, and then you also, uh, you know, uh, receive some instruction, you know, Received uh, some oral you know, transmission, right? Oral transmission about some practice, right? Vajrayana practice, in tantric practice. And then you also received the, you know, finally how to do the practice. So there's three kinds, right? In Sutra, you also you have the guru who did the kind in three ways, right? But here I'm talking more of the, you know, uh, highest yoga tantra, yeah, then, yeah. Highest yoga tantra, you know, then, yeah, need to be very, you know, uh, it's a it's a little bit delicate, you know, uh, delicate, and also it's a very sensitive. I need to be very cautious, you know. Yeah, the <laughs> who made face to face with uh, uh, difficult to difficult to pronounce right the name. So we say it's difficult to pronounce, you know, because somebody is very very you know or kind to you, really grateful to you. So for me, it says. Uh, you know, very difficult to, you know, pronounce the name. Yeah. This is, uh, you know, when we write the biography, we, we use this. Lord Fabunga Vajatara Deshe Nyingbo Vajatara Lord Fabunga Vajatara right? Vajatara is you know, Vajatara is the, what is the color of the Vajatara? The blue, dark blue right? Dark blue Vajatara means is the, uh, you know the Buddha who spoke the Tantra in the High Shoga Tantra Highest yoga tundra, right? So in the as I said, you know, in the highest yoga tundra, then things really change, you know. <laughs> then the, the guru really plays a you know really crucial role. <laughs> Without guru, there's no enlightenment. In the highest yoga tundra, right? Highest yoga tundra is that's why I say it's very sensitive, very delicate, you know. Yeah, <clears throat> like this. 
So Vajatara means, you know, once in a, uh, once Guru in the highest Sukhatanda is addressed as Buddha, the real Buddha, Vajatara, Vajatara, right? <clears throat> Of course, in the lower tan tantras and in the sutra, it's a little bit better, a little bit better. I wish you tantra, yeah. Then <laughs> it be pretty careful. <clears throat> uh, Sambo was born north of Lhasa in 1878. His father was a, a minor official, but the family was not wealthy. Although the night was dark, a light, the light shone in the room. And the people outside the home had a vision of protect protector of the roof. Pavanga right. Rinpoche was an emanation of the great scholar uh, Chanja uh, Rabedoje. Although initially it was thought that he was the uh, he was the reincarnation of the learned Kamba Geshe from Sereme Monastery. Uh, Rinpoche entered the monastery at the age of seven. At the age of seven, did the usual studies of a, a monk earn, a, he earn his Geshe degree and spent two years at Yume Tantric College. So, Pamunga Rinpoche, you know, although, you know, he has not, you know, uh, I mean, high ranking, you know, uh, Lama, not like this, you know, he was, you know, not a high ranking, you know, Lama like this. So, he really, you know, led a very simple and humble and simple life. That, but the most important thing is, that he put into practice. So that really, you know, gathered so many, you know, disciples, so many, you know, disciples. Even, you know, the great, you know, the, the you know, the great, you know, uh, the teachers, the great uh, Rinpoche's, the great Lamas. He all, you know, come under his, you know, feet because he just did, you know, he sincerely put into practice what he, you know, uh, studied, he really put into practice. This really amazed, you know, later on as, you know, as we, you know, as seen, that he really become you know the teacher of many many great you know masters around you know around his time in the 19th century right so uh, and you know at one point of time you know na uh, uh, the you know his son is the was a, a small uh, was a small so then uh, he, his son is the was small so he could not take the political responsibility yeah political and spiritual responsibility so uh, the regent, the regent around his time, he requested Pavanga Rinpoche to take, to take the position to lead the country of Tibet, right? So Pavanga Rinpoche <laughs> declined, he refused. <laughs> this alone says a lot of things, you know. This alone, you know, talks a lot of high level of practice that he, he at us, right? <clears throat> His root guru was Thabo Lama Rinpoche, Jambil Nudup, yeah, Jambil Nudup, Jambil Nudup Jazo, uh, from Shoka. He was definitely a Bodhisattva, and Pabanga Rinpoche was uh, his foremost disciple. Uh, yeah, Pabanga Rinpoche also the emanation of the, you know, the um, Heruga, because one time he, uh, he went to, you know, pilgrimage to the one Pabang area. You know, one area, and there was a Heruga, you know, statue, Heruga Chandra Samara statue. So he did, you know, some talk, you know, talk in front of this Heruga. So what happened is, you know, uh, they, you know, the the nectar, you know, the nectar coming down come from the Heruga mouth, Heruga mouth, and then Heruga, you know, the predicted, you know, Vajra Yukini and Heruga also predicted that I will take care of your disciple up to seven generation. Like this. So this is really wondrous. <clears throat> so then I will, uh, we have the time here yeah, or. Okay. Yeah, we can go on. Uh, he was definitely a Bodhisattva and Prabhupada Rinpoche was, uh, was his foremost disciple. He lived in the cave in a Pasang. Uh, and his main practice was bodhicitta. His main deity was Avalokiteshvara, right? And he would recite fifty thousand the mantra Om Mani Padme Hum every night. When Yabji Rinpoche first met Thabo Rinpoche, 
at a talk offering ceremony in in Lhasa, he cried from beginning to end out of reverence, right? So sometimes this happened, right? Uh, you know, uh, when you have, you know, for example, there are many masters, you know, spiritual gurus, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, uh, what really happened is due to some karmic connection, you know, out of when there is some karmic connection with this, the, the particular person, sometimes, you know, the person waves, you know, sometimes the person really develop a, such a high level of, you know, uh, the devotion. So uh, these things could also happen, you know. This also, uh, you know, uh, indicate that, you know, the close, you know, karmic connection with the person. When Prabhupada Rinpoche had finished his studies, he visited Thabo Lama Rinpoche in his cave and was sent into a Lamrim retreat nearby. Thabo Lama Rinpoche would teach him a Lamrim topic and then, and then return to explain what he would understand, what he had understood. If he had gained some realization, Thabo Lama Rinpoche would take him uh, teach him some more and Pabonga Rinpoche would go back and meditate on that. It went on like this for 10 years and if that's not amazing, what what is? So in early times, you know, they do, you know, these time people are a little bit busy, you know, in early times, you know, in remote you know, area, what they do is, you know, uh, the teacher, you know, the, the spirit guru give the instruction, you know, give the instruction. That's why I Told, right, we have the three Kadam, you know, lineage, right? Kadam lineage. Kadam lineage, and the first is called Kadam, you know, treatises. Kadam treatises, or, you know, Kadam treatises. That means, you know, for example, we have studied for a very long period of time, for years and years, we spend, you know, time studying with us teaching. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, that's why Dom Dumba say, after having studied for so many years, you know, when it comes to doing some Dharma practice, we are confused, we are lost, you know. It looked like we need to go somewhere, some particular teacher to get all the instruction. Jezalaba said, that's totally wrong. That's, you know, that's not the way, proper way of doing, you know. You really don't know how to put into practice, having studied for so many years. So, you know, that's why, you know, you know, in Kadam, Tidisis, Dinich, what happened is, what you have heard, you know, for so many years, you essentialize all this into the Lamrim teaching, put into the Lamrim practice, and then you practice. That is called Kadam Treatise Lineage. And then the, the second one is Kadam Instruction Lineage, right? So those, you know, sometimes, you know, people due to the, due to the lack of, or, you know, uh, not have uh, intelligent, so they don't study too much, you know. So what they just uh, receive, just a uh, short Lamrim, right? Short Lamrim, you know. Uh, short Lamrim, the teacher give the short Lamrim teaching, and then based on this, and then person, you know, uh, you know, based on this, then person try to practice, you know, the disciple try to practice. This is called Kadam instruction lineage. Again, the third lineage is, now the third one is, now the, you know, person also don't want to go into text, so the master, you know, the, the, the master or guru, you know, based on his own experience, now you have to do this practice, you do this practice, what I teach you, you do this and do that. So the person practice, right? Based on the Guru's own experience, right? Based on the Guru's own experience. So this is Kadam, you know, more kind of, I don't know how to say, you know, uh, Kadam practice lineage, right? So like this, you know, in early times, do this way, right? For example, like, um, yeah, if you look at the biography, you know, uh, the Marpa, you know, Marpa gives some teaching, you know, to um, Malaraba. So Malaraba, you know, he put the, you know, Baralem, Baralem on his head, and then he meditated, meditated for a long period of time, you know. And then after he developed, you know, the spiritual experience, then he, you know, go to his uh, teacher, Marpa, and, you know, I have this experience, I have that experience, you know. And then Marpa, oh, that's very good. Now I will move to next, you know, next training. Something like this, you know. In olden times, this carries on. Now, due to you know, due to the lack of you know time, you know, in, from all the respect, this is a little bit for yeah difficult to do. It went on like this for uh, ten years, and if that's not amazing, what is this? Is really amazing, right? <laughs> There's no uh, any other amazing like this, right? <laughs> ten years, right? <laughs> 
if you were to do for you the three months oh, <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> i'm sorry <clears throat> anyway yeah then pabonga rimbuche's four main disciples were chapchil ding rimbuche chapchil ding rimbuche just hold on so then just imagine um the how much uh papanka learn and practice lamrim 10 years and yeah. to put all of this in a book uh and his teaching so that he can help us so the least we can do right is to really learn this text inside out and understand it like as you said i mean we can read we can all read but if we don't understand with the help of a teacher, then how could we practice? Is that correct? Mm. Yeah. So, so that's the purpose. And I hope mm. that uh, everyone here uh, join us. Uh, mm. This is the purpose why we do this as a discussion. And I hope everyone can join in the discussion so that we can truly understand Lam Rim so mm. we can also put that in practice and now hopefully uh, we can all gain from this experience. Mm. Definitely, definitely true. Uh, his uh, Eminence Chundi Rinpoche also says, you know, also says, oh, we, we do have many poor practice, you know, or oh, we have plenty of poor practice. Buddha Matriya, Avalokiteshvara, Grintara, Vajra Yogini, Goya Samaja, Yamandaka, so many, so many. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very wonderful, you know, progress. Uh, he saw in the Shindir Rinpoche, you know, say, you know, uh, when you are on the bed, you know, when you are dying, if you have Lamrim text, Lamrim, great stages of path, Lamrim text on your, you know, on your head, it will guarantee that you will go to pure land. You don't need power. So this, again, how, you know, this, you know, the, it works, you know. This statement, how much it acts, you know, we understand. <clears throat> so, yeah. Uh, what, what do you say? I think it's. I see, yeah. Um, so, okay. Uh, uh, so everyone, is that okay? We continue until eight thirty, or should we end right here? Just give me a nod, those of you that's on, um, on the screen. Uh, we'd like to go ahead and finish the introduction if we can. Is that a nod? Yes. Okay. We'll we'll continue for another ten minutes then. Yeah. So you know, I said you know. Don't satisfied with the Lamrim, even don't think that I listen only one. Many, many great masters, they say I received Lamrim 10 times. <laughs> Still, they're not satisfied, you know. <laughs> the, even the, the, for instance, the great, you know, uh, the master, you know, they say he received Lamrim 12 times, right? Still not satisfied. So there are many great masters, you know. Oh, they, if you, if you, you know, there's a, you know, there's a biography of the Lamrim lineage masters, you know, composed by one great master, almost as thick as this, all the Lamrim lineage masters, the biography, right, biography. So, you know, the more we hear the Lamrim, uh, you know, the best things, and if we really put into practice, you know, practice, even the, we are not able to do that much, you know, the important thing, it leaves the positive imprint, because in this, we have taken the precious women, but this will not come again. This is this precious human birth will not come again. <laughs> you know, this was already guaranteed <laughs> by all the great masters. You know, such a precious human birth. You know, this is something like amazing. You know, the sheer luck, pure sheer luck. <laughs> There's no great game involved. Uh, totally, you know, it's almost like star in the daytime. It's purely like a star in the daytime that we have such a precious human birth, and this will never ever come again easily, easily, right? So in this, at least we need to put some, you know, some positive imprint. If we don't put some positive imprint in this way of life, there is no time come, no day will come in the future, right? So, so this is how we improve, you know, 
We cannot, you know, uh, we we practice lamrim overnight. We enlightened. It's impossible, you know. So step by step, you know, we put some imprint, imprint, right? So through this way, then you know, we get, we progress on the spiritual. We progress as we make the spiritual journey, right? So like this, <clears throat> uh, I will. He leave a child and gave him his. Uh, yeah. Okay, Pongo Rambuche's four main disciples were Chapjilin Rambuche, Chapji Tijan Rambuche, Kansa Rambuche, and Tata Rambuche. Tata Rambuche, yeah, Tata Rambuche, who was, yeah, Tata Tata Rambuche, yeah, who was a region of Japan. So Chapjilin Rambuche, Pongo, yeah, Chapjilin Rambuche, Ling Rambuche, Ling Rambuche, I think you, do you know? Yeah, this picture. This was the Ling Rinpoche, such a great master, the emanation of Yamantaka. Right. That, so this was composed by his own Dalai Lama. He wrote his. Then uh, this is the Tijan Rinpoche, a great master. Oh. Huh? Mm, I'll send them the picture. I see. Yeah. It's, it's not coming through. Mm. I see. So, anyway, yeah, this is the Tijan are very, you know, uh, really, this Tijan Rinpoche and Ling Rinpoche, you know, they, you know, they, they, they cannot yeah. see, right? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, no problem. So, you know, they really, they really, you know, practice. They're really very, you know, close, you know, friend. Some, you know, really close friends. Sometimes, you know, uh, make the long life offering to Ling Rinpoche. make the long life offering to Chara Rinpoche. They, you know, they, you know, share the teaching with each other. You know, they are like student and you know, uh, student and you know, uh, student and you know, a teacher relationship with each other. Such a pure, you know, purity. There's a purity, right? So yeah, he uh, he later wrote his, uh, you know. Before he passed away, his son the Dalai Lama asked him to write his own biography. So, because he was really excellent in poetry, uh, uh, the, the grammar. If you look, you know this. You know, if you look into his biography, so yeah, amazing. So, Chandramuchi also received his holiness. Chandramuchi received many, many teachings from Chandramuchi, this great master. Uh, <clears throat> So there is a close relationship uh, from our children Rinpoche with all these great masters, and he learned directly from them. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So. I don't have to explain, you know, how many teachings receive, you know, the limitless number of teaching. <laughs> His own Dalai Lama, uh, Tata Rinpoche, was the main teacher of His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, where he was, where he was, when he was a child, and gave him his novice ordination. I was born in Kham, in Eastern Tibet, and two of my elder teachers were uh, disciples of Prabhupada Rinpoche, so I was brought up in the atmosphere of a complete faith in Prabhupada Rinpoche. You see, uh, the way they address the Prabhupada, the way they address uh, His Holiness, uh, Chintar Rinpoche also address, you know, uh, Vajadhara Prabhupada Rinpoche, uh, Vajadhara Ling Rinpoche, Vajadhara Tejan Rinpoche. I mean, they both, you know, Prabhupada also, uh, you know, Ling Rinpoche and Tejan Rinpoche also address, His Holiness Dalam also address Vajadhara, Pabanga Rinpoche, Ling Rinpoche, Tijan Rinpoche, like this. They don't, you know, use the direct word, you know, <laughs> right? There, there's no habit, you know, some, some at one occasion, you know, uh, when, you know, Master Adisha has 150 disciples, you know, Master Adisha. So, 
150 disciples, you know, uh, when he used the master selling bar, master selling bar, then, you know, he put the, you know, the false like this, he put in the crown, you know, he put, the, when somebody used the words, Atisha, Atisha, master, some of get a little bit, you know, annoyed, right? And then also, you know, this uh, uh, Ling Rinpoche and Trijan Rinpoche both, you know, I mean, Ling Rinpoche and Trijan Rinpoche both have many masters, you know, some masters. But they, when, they, when they use the, uh, the Pabonga Rinpoche, they say, Vajadar Pabonga. <laughs> yeah, like this. <clears throat> so it has, yeah, some meaning, some, you know, yeah. <laughs> Deeper meaning, why they do this. <laughs> From how much faith I had in Rinpoche when I usually came uh, into his uh, presence. But I also had the personal reason for having great faith in him. I was the only son of an important family. And although the 13th Dalai Lama uh, had recognized me as an incarnate Lama, and Pamanga Rinpoche himself had said that I should join Sarah Monastery in Lhasa, my parents were not uh, happy about him. Sometimes this uh, happened that uh, in the beginning, you know, sometimes, you know, in the monastery also, you know, in the beginning, there's some, you know, child does not, you know, display some kind. But then later on, you know, I think the same with Pabunga Rambache, right? In the early part of life, in the early, you know, but then through slowly, slowly, I think some karmic imprint, you know, blossom, activate. Then their person become, you know, surpasses everybody. <laughs> <clears throat> So yeah, uh, this surpasses everybody. That person becomes something very special, right? Yeah, some has this, you know, tendency. <clears throat> like we have a one monk, you know, we say uh, one monk in the beginning of his life, you know, not that you know well known, you know, but then later on when he reached, you know, some higher classes, then he show his all aptitude, <laughs> become rising, something like rising star. Yeah, uh, this happens. Yeah. However, my father died soon after this, and I was finally able to uh, set out for central Tibet. Can you imagine my experience as I embarked on horseback on the two-month voyage? I was only four, 14, and becoming, uh, becoming a monk really was the thing to do for, the, to do for a fellow my age. I felt that the opportunity to go to Lhasa to get ordained and live uh, as a, a Rinpoche, as the Thadin Dalai Lama has said, I should was all the wondrous work of Kabanga Rinpoche. As for as the time for my arrival in Lhasa, Lhasa Kabanga Rinpoche was living at a, a Tashi Chuiling, Tashi Chuiling, a cave above Sera Monastery. So there was a monastery. So above there is a one, you know, uh, a cave, you know. Pamunga uh, Rinpoche used to meditate on that for a long period of time, you know. We made an appointment. And a few days later, my mother, my Changzhi attendant, you know, a man in the, a man in change of my personal affairs. And I rode up on horseback. Although Rinpoche was, uh, Rinpoche was expecting us that day, we had not arranged a time. Nevertheless, he had, uh, he had just had his own Changzhi prepared tea and sweet rice, which freshly awaited our, our, our arrival. This convinced me that Rinpoche was clairvoyant, a manifestation of all the things Vajatara himself. I mean, sometimes we think, you know, uh, the, uh, you know, for example, like uh, Ling Rinpoche, the great master, you know, uh, I mean, the, his holiness Lama have the vision of the, the many deities and his, uh, you know, Ling Rinpoche also has the vision of, you know, like Yamantaka, Chakras, uh, Tijan Rinpoche also has the vision of the Vajra Yogini, uh, you know, Heruka, and also Pabanga Rinpoche, the direct vision of the Vajra Yogini, right? And then Zeta Manitara, and then many other, you know, deities like Heruga Chaka Sambara, like this. And also, we say Chunder Rinpoche also had the vision of, you know, the like uh, Tara, right? Like White Tara. Uh, then, so, so forth. Um, should we uh, stop here? Because we, uh, uh, our translator uh, has to uh, leave. So, 
Mình oh, okay. lại okay. Thank you. Dạ xin cảm ơn mọi người. Okay, sure. dạ. à, mình ngừng ở đây. Dạ cảm ơn chị chị Kim nhé. Dạ. À, okay. Okay, you yeah. can do dedication. Oh, yeah, they need to the one that will taste Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Ben. Thank you. Thank you everyone for participating. Dạ xin cảm ơn tất cả mọi người. Dạ mình hẹn gặp tuần tới. Dạ. Thank you. Thank you ban tổ chức. Thank you so much. Thank you Dạ, yeah, thank you. So just a reminder if you have questions please use our link. Uh, or any questions that doesn't have to be what was taught or in the book, anything comes up, this is the chance for us to ask the questions as we please. Dạ, xin cảm ơn mọi người. Uh, xin nhắc nhở là nếu mà có câu hỏi thì mình có thể dùng cái link mà Trang đã gửi ra để mà đặt câu hỏi. Và không cần phải là ở trong những cái trang mình đã đọc, nhưng mà nếu mà uh, có những cái câu hỏi nào mà thắc mắc mà cần thầy giải thích thì mình cứ đặt câu hỏi rồi mình sẽ lựa lúc. À, để mà à, à, để cho thầy trả lời nha. Dạ, xin cảm ơn tất cả mọi người. Xin hẹn gặp mọi người tuần tới. Thanks everyone. We'll see you next week. Thank you.